They're the Skywalkers. You've met the whole family, but they've never shared the same screen until now. Oops. What? Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. Ooh. The award-winning game franchise is back for an adventure that lets you play through all six episodes for the first time. Now you can mix and match your favorite characters from across the galaxy hmm? and build your adventure from episode one all the way through to episode six with new places to battle. characters to control Lego Star Wars the complete saga this fall fun runs in the family Duh! hi everyone welcome once again to geek fest rants I'm Carlos Perone and today we have an episode about Lego video games how certain films that we like all of a sudden they decided to make video games based on their Lego figures. So this is a bizarre combination of toys and video games that spin off from an entertainment standpoint, mainly a movie. We are going to be covering a couple of different films that turned into video games. And we have a couple of participants today who are, I don't know if I can call them experts, but they love to play these games. Let's see, we have Kyle Perone. Say hi, Kyle. Hello, I'm an expert. We have Amanda Perone. Say hi, Amanda. Hello, he is not. And we have James, who not only plays the games, but is going to give us a little bit of the history of how we went from a film to a toy to a video game. Say hi, James. Hey, everybody. Now, Legos are something I'm really fond of. I collect the actual toys. I build them from time to time. And I'm not very good at video games. So when I heard that they were coming out with a Lego Star Wars video game... I was very excited, but I didn't think it was going to be that good. I figured it would be a little ridiculous because in the past they had made some things called Lego Creator and they were games that weren't very exciting. They were basically you would create some characters and move around, but it wasn't necessarily a game that we know. So of course Star Wars and Lego are going to be great, I would hope. So around 2005, in conjunction with Revenge of the Sith, they came out with Lego Star Wars, the prequels. It was episode one, episode two, and episode three. And they broke the movies up into playable environments, just like in the movies. And it was unbelievable. Kids loved it. Adults loved it. I certainly loved it. And I'm not a video game guy. Now, what's the basic structure of the characters here? Now, obviously, you're dealing with a Lego-looking character. But they also don't do a lot of speaking, correct? No, no speaking. And that's what makes it great. They use official sound effects from the movies and they use grunts and moans and things of that nature from the characters to give you a feel. It's a distinct individual sound and style to these Yes, instead games. of actually speaking, which certainly saves them paying actors some money, they can use grunts, moans. Now the droids and everything else have real sounds and there's laser fire and there's spaceship sounds, but they do not need actual voices. And that's been something that has followed through through all the sets. And that also gives them a slightly humorous edge to it. It's kind of like, we know that the games are marketed towards kids, yes. younger kids. These are not the teenager-y type of shoot 'em ups This is more of a kid, preteen, maybe a crowd they're shooting for, and it's very family-friendly. You know, you don't have to worry about what might happen on this game that a kid might or might not want to see. They tried to make them realistic to the movies. You know, it's not made-up stuff. The real fans can follow the movies. In fact, I enjoyed the prequels better by playing the Lego games. It made the prequels more fun when you watch them because you think about them in the Lego sense. So let's talk about the Star Wars part of this game. Let's hit the prequels first. How was it? I think it made the prequels very exciting. As an adult player who was not very good at video games, I had to play this on a computer using a portable USB remote control and try to get this to work. And I would sit up till three in the morning trying to play these boards because I was so excited to keep going. <laughs> How about you, Kyle? Do you remember the prequel one, the first one? Yeah, that was actually the first Lego game whatsoever I got. And I got it for the PC platform. I enjoyed it a lot. Like, my dad told me not to play Episode 3 since I, by then I wasn't old enough to see Revenge of the Sith yet. 
so we had to make sure that it was okay for me first. So basically, all I was able to play at the time before maybe like a few months later was Episode 1, Phantom Menace, and Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. And that's when it started from there. I enjoyed it, and now I'm going to start playing the, the other games which I played before. So Kyle, the prequel one you played on a PC. At a certain point later, you ended up actually playing it on the Wii. Do you feel there's a difference? Is it easier, harder? Does it matter which way you play it? Well, like the one that you get on the Wii, which came later... Yeah. Like, after they released the first one, which we were talking about, then the second one, and then you get the third one, which is the complete saga, which comes with the prequels and the original trilogy. Yeah. But when you get to the, finally, when they first put it on the Wii, which was the um, the complete saga, they added some extra features in there, like oh. secret levels and unlockable Legos, and I think it was the first time they introduced the gold bricks, right? Well, I'll tell you, it's a lot harder on the PC, because I played it on a laptop, which let me take it to work with me and play it while I was supposed to be working, but it was also a lot harder to use the remote control that I had and to make things work because you had to click out of things and scroll over, mm -hmm. whereas when you have the controller for the Wii, which I don't know how it is for the PlayStation and the Xbox, but for the Wii, it's a lot better. You can move around things. You're using two controllers at the same right, time. Right, right, right. So you're moving constantly, and then you're shooting or pressing other buttons. The worst thing, I guess, would be using a PC with a keyboard instead of the attachable yeah. Well, sometimes you had to controller. use that. Sometimes with the PC, you had to use the keyboard in conjunction to your controller to scroll things. And I had a terrible time. I couldn't finish the game at first on the final board of The Revenge of the Sith because, as fans who have played the game know, you have to get R2 to hover across onto different molten lava oh, yeah. rocks and then jump back as Anakin or a Jar Jar who has a higher jump ability to get over to some rock that's much farther. So it's a combination of like a jumping character and R2 who's a hover character and it took me forever. I put the game away and then finally I opened it up again and it came to me, ah, R2 and Jar Jar. I kept trying to jump with regular characters, and for some reason, I just wasn't getting it. Now, you didn't have any other cheat books at the time or anything like that? Oh, I did. <laughs> I had everything. I was starting to look up things on the internet, and very rarely did I have any friends who'd play this game, because why would adults be playing yeah, this game? I couldn't game? help you with that. But, now, did the game have any Easter eggs about future stuff coming up yeah, or anything it like had, that? it was very exciting, and that was the open to Star Wars Episode Four with the actual scenes in Lego form, which showed the Star Destroyer chasing the blockade runner. And that was a hint of what was to come. It took me a really long time to finally unlock that level. To get to that level, you had to play the entire game. You had to get everything. There were these canisters, there were characters, there was boards. You had to basically accomplish everything for that to unlock. And once that did, that was your surprise. I thought you just had to get like the Jedi thing, which you just fill up the stud canister thing on the top. And like when it fills up, I thought you just had to get all of that. Maybe in your version, that's how it happened. Yeah, I had it on the PC. Maybe on the PC. So what comes after prequels? When you see this scene, it's the entire opening scene until the droids launch into the pod to Tatooine. And that's where the game ends. This was not guaranteed that there was going to be a sequel to this. That yeah, did but isn't that very risky to put an Easter egg or a sequence like that that is so teasing people that something else is coming? Well, this is Star Wars, so you pretty much figure they had a plan. Mm -hmm. But if this game didn't sell, oh, that was the end of it. Right, right, right. But I'm sure they had a plan, and since they did the animatics for the original trilogy, that probably was in their game Right, plan. the characters are built already. So, so shortly after, by the summer, this game had sold amazingly. They had announced that they were going to release Star Wars, the original trilogy. All right, let's talk about that. Okay, well, by the time that came... I couldn't wait. And a lot of people were very excited because now that's the Star Wars everybody loves. Now, this the, is just the original trilogy. Yes, the prequels were exciting and fun for some people, but the original trilogy, Star Wars, Empire, and Jedi, A New Hope for some people, that is what we wanted. And you were going to now be able to play Luke, Han, Chewie, everybody that you expected from the movies in the environment just like the movies. And that was just very exciting. Everybody who was a fan of Lego Star Wars 1 was very excited about getting the original trilogy. Did you play that one, Kyle? Yeah, I had that for the PC. Yeah, that was still a PC for me as well. There was no Wii yet. Wii had not been released till about 2007, and this was about... 2006. Well, this was something that came out before the Wii. Now, eventually it came out on the Wii, and I'll ask you the same question I asked you before. Other than the 
how easy it is to control the character because you're dealing with keyboard versus this versus that. Was there any major difference on the Wii? Well, first of all, I had to get used to new controls and stuff because this was kind of revolutionary at the time. But because they didn't release the second game for the Wii. So when the third game came, which had both the prequel and the original trilogy, it was a lot more funner, but you also had to deal with the new gold bricks, and then you had to deal with the... I don't think they had the red bricks until this. And then you had to deal with the mini kit things, but this time, like, after you build them, there's, there's these secret levels that you can get after you beat a, an entire movie. Mm -hmm. Then you get to these secret levels that you can play with the mini kits. They form vehicles, and then those vehicles you can operate in the, uh, the secret levels. So it, it's not really harder to use. It's just that you're dealing with newer things, newer ways of getting points, I guess. And, yeah, and, and, there's, and there's also these new features. That way you could also have in, like, from the original trilogy, that way you can add the original trilogy characters into the prequel trilogy characters, things. That way you could edit, like, let's say you have to have C-3PO to open this door. Well, they might change it to have, you have to have Boba Fett open this door. Was the original trilogy an improvement as far as you know? Actually, they kept the game pretty straight in the prequel series. When they went to the original trilogy, they added different playability. You could ride the different creatures, you could ride different ships or vehicles in a manner like you could take rides in uh, AT-ATs or Scout Walkers and things you like that. You couldn't do that on the prequels? No, they kept it pretty straight. Whatever you did in that environment, just in the movie, you did it in the game. But they added different things after you unlock stuff that you could take, take ships that you have earned back and forth into these different worlds. So now on Tatooine, you could have a prequel Scout Walker, or on Hoth, you could have a different type of ship. You could have a Naboo fighter. And so they added a couple things like that, which I didn't love. It made it a little harder. Uh, for instance, on the original trilogy, Hoth was a real tough one. You had to fly uh, speeder bikes. You had to pull these bombs that were these pink bombs that were difficult to get through. Yeah. Switching over for things and catching things made it a little tougher. But overall, it was pretty accurate to what we saw in the movies, so it was a lot of fun. Now, they fixed some of the things that we didn't like, and they enhanced some other things when they came to the complete saga, which finally was available on the Wii. That's the first time the Wii touches this. Yeah. When they put that out, they put both of them into one set, because some people didn't ever play the first series, because... Like, we had PCs, a lot of people wouldn't play a PC game. Now, by the time the combo game came out, was there any hint that they wanted to go forward with the line? I would say no, because this was the end. Movies are over. The movies are over. What could they do? And actually, I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong, Kyle, I don't <laughs> think that The Clone Wars was on TV yet at the time of Not the complete saga. Not until 2008, which is two years later. Well, Clone Wars, obviously, it's a success, the show. So, at some point, they have to decide, all right... Here's another chance to create another game. Do they even bother with PC at this point, or are they done with PC? They might have put it out on PC. And I think Nintendo DS might have started getting some stuff. The 3DS, uh, they, put, it they released either, it on the it was 3DS. A, a limited version of what we were playing on the real games, or the same <laughs> thing, just with a limited screen. Now, the Clone Wars series is huge in terms of how many different places they go. Where did they decide to end up in as far as the game goes? Well, that didn't start until years later. They had done a few other series before that, and I guess they wanted to keep some life into the Star Wars line because they were still selling the toys as well as the show being on the air. So I think they decided, hey, we can do this with the look of the Clone Wars characters, which were more cartoony, but not, you know, not ridiculously so. So they tried to make Anakin and the other characters with a Lego version of the cartoon. Right, but my question is more, the movie's the movie. You know there's Hoth, there's Dagobah, there's this. The cartoon goes to a lot of different places. How did they decide, or where did they decide, where to limit the storyline is? Like, where is the storyline of the Clone Wars Lego game? I'm a really good Clone Wars knowledgeist dude, so I, I, I know this by heart. Technically, what it seems like they did since they took the most popular episodes, probably, because they took, like, all the story arcs that they had in the series, which is, like, the three episodes and the five episodes okay. and the two episodes... But they also had their most popular ones, which get more hits, which like is like, like Lair of Grievous, which had Kit Fisto, which first introduced Kit Fisto. So which this is, is in, like, what, like into the second or even third? My impression is they it was a lot wide. of second season. Right. There were elements of the first season involving some of the ships. I think there was more first season than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Now we have three different distinctive games we're dealing with with Star Wars. 
is the third better than the second? No. Or there's the second still kind of the The complete benchmark? saga is probably the best. The complete saga involves the first two. There's okay. really four. There's really four separate games in the Star Wars line. First, second, combo, and Clone Wars. Exactly. Okay. I think they fixed some, in the complete saga, they fixed some of the problems they had with the original trilogy. The things that they thought they were enhancing, they then enhanced them even more to make them a little bit more playable. And then they took all that and some of the things they've done in the other lines and made the Clone Wars, which are things I didn't care for. Now, is there any hint of them wanting to continue with a second Clone War game at some point? I haven't heard anything, but I imagine they're going to do another game that would involve more of the third and by then maybe the fourth series. They'll have and, more and stuff that they have more material done to play with. Yeah, they've they've gone into directions that you can go anywhere with that because as long as the series is on the air, people will buy it. Okay. What's your question? Um, I was wondering if they were going to do, like, for the Clone Wars, if they were going to have one video game for each season. Oh, my goodness. That That'd would be, be a lot. Even more so got- yeah, well, that would be a lot because, like, right now, if we're talking about the first... I mean first, 21 chapters. No, no, but here's the thing. The first Clone Wars one they put out covers a little bit of one, a little bit of two, and maybe a little bit of three. And Clone Wars can only go on, I guess, for another maybe a year or two. Six or seven seasons tops, I imagine. So I don't think they will ever do one episode per season. That would take too much, and I don't think it would sell at all. Not one episode, one season. Yeah, I don't think that would happen. That would happen. Yeah, otherwise then you would end up with... They would have to take out the biggest hits. And the biggest hits, they already included in there, so they're going to have to go with like the secondaries. Like No, I think they hit a midway point right now. And the midway point yeah. is where we are with the show. And probably, yeah, they could do one more if they wanted I to. I think they have at least one more yeah. in them. Why maybe, not? Maybe sometime next year because nothing has maybe been announced right. in, for the near future. I think that's one of the things that they know will sell. Unless they actually put out a new Star Wars product... Whether it's a kiddie show, which they're talking about, or an actual live action show where then they can then turn that into a game. But that's way in the future. What's the next franchise? Well, after this, they announced Batman and Indiana Jones. And both of them were very exciting because they have elements of geeky type things. Right. People love Indiana Jones and you have three movies which would follow the same format of the prequel series and the original trilogies. You have a hub and then you go into three different worlds and maybe an unlockable fourth type thing. So with Batman, okay. you had the main character and they created a completely separate story on the order of the Batman animated series. They used similar music to the Batman animated series from the 90s. That was very popular. Okay. And the characters kind of looked like the figures that they had put out for Batman. Which were not based point. on that series? No, the characters, the Bat- more generic Batman, Batman. the Batman Lego toys weren't necessarily based on the movies okay. because the movies were a little dark and they weren't based on any previous shows or comic books per se okay. to give them their own life. But they did make things that in the toy line that looked like the Tumblr from the modern Batman oh, series. Okay. But they yeah. also did things that were just generic comic book type characters with all the Batman, you know, the Batman rogues gallery. Okay, do you remember anything special about the game that you liked about the Batman game? Are we dealing in PC world or now we're only PC's over? PC's done. Okay, PC's done, so we're in Wii well, World now. I ha- well, I don't have it for the Wii. I have it for the DS. Okay. It's kind of difficult because, like, I've played it also on the Wii version at a friend's house. Yeah. And it's better than the DS version. The DS version has less levels. It has only five levels per storyline. Okay. But there is more exclusive unlockable characters like this alternate costume for Poison Ivy and this alternate costume for Mothman or whatever his name is. I forget his name. So you lose a little bit of the quality in terms of being able to get or see certain things, but they do give you something... That's only for DS people yeah. to keep you happy, I guess. Like they also have like an alternate costume for Riddler too. And, and obviously you're looking at a very yeah. tiny but screen. But on the Wii version, they also have like more costumes that you can unlock for Batman and Robin okay. that, that do different things. Like there's like a heat one for Batman where like and you, you can't can walk do that fi- on the DS. Yeah, he can walk Those specific fire. ones. Yeah, and then there's also like a Robin where you can suck up pieces and then build something. Uh-huh. So, and there's also more levels and more villains. But in the other one, there's just more costumes. Now... Do you like Batman, not in general, but the game itself? Do you think it was better than the Star Wars ones, or the Star Wars are still kind of good I for I thought you? the Lego Batman is harder. It has more features, but it's probably got to be the, the one that has the second most features in the Legos, Lego game world. Uh-huh. But they almost completely redid 
like the format of the prequel thing because when I had the prequel yeah. thing, they kind of shot it over like they don't have like a side view. Like they kind of changed the camera angle kind of bitch because originally it was like a top view, like you would see like a top view. But when you get into the Batman yeah. and the Indiana Jones, they kind of change it a little bit and they make it into like a front view, like a Mario kind of view okay. where you see them just like walking. You don't go like an overhead view. James, did you also notice a different camera angles in this game? Don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> But I loved Batman. I thought it was one of the best games of all of them. And I think, like he said, there's different characters and stuff. But following the prequel look, instead of doing just following a script, because there really was no script. This wasn't following movies. This was a completely new story. They did it three different scenarios from the good guy's point of view. And then the exact same story then from the bad guy's point of view. And the hub was either the Batcave or the bad guy's lair. And the two stories came together when you finished. You can play as either good or bad? You had to play the story mode in the good guys version, finish it to unlock the bad guys mode. You play the bad guys story mode to unlock then the whole game. And then you go through to get all the little minutia pieces. Oh my god, that's that's So difficult. it's quite an undertaking. And it was very exciting because first of all, like I said, this was like the Batman animated series. It was like a comic book. And if you're a Batman fan even of the movies, it had elements of Batman and all the characters, so you were able to play it. And I just really think they hit a home run on this. And I think this is what made the series viable for everything we have now and going forward. So compared to Star Wars, better? Improved? Just more of the same? It's hard to put them together. I like them both. The complete saga was probably as good as you can get for the Star Wars world. And this Batman, a non-Star Wars world, was perfect. Who knew what was going to happen? But I think you wind up getting, you know, a great game, a lot of fun. I'd play it again and again if I could. Amanda, I know you didn't play too much of Batman, but is there anything that you remember about it that you liked? I liked how um, you can get, like, a bunch of different costumes for Catwoman. And what, I you could change nice. different type of costumes for her? Mm -hmm. That's cool. Like, if you can change the character, then it changes to, like, Catwoman in this costume, Catwoman in that costume. That's cool. So, I hear Indiana Jones came next? Well, Indiana Jones tried to tie in with the release of the new Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which Lego was also releasing toys from the original trilogy of Indiana Jones movies, and they were going to release toys on the new movie. Unfortunately, as good as the game was, and the game was almost as good as Batman, with all the indie characters and environments, except I think, personally, they dropped the ball. They gave you an Easter egg by letting you do the River Phoenix young indie oh, from, from the right. third Indiana Jones movie. But I think they dropped the ball by releasing it with Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but not including the environments of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and story when they released the game. But is that because they're trying to capitalize on two games or they weren't ready? You could be cynical and say they were going to put a second one because they had a plan. And with Lucas, you always have a plan. <laughs> or you can say the movie was in production while they were making the game and they weren't able to include it right. properly or necessarily not wanting to release any storyline. I'm not quite uh, sure. Yeah, I haven't really looked too. back on it. But I feel it hurt the game because it was a very good game. It was very exciting. And all the characters, everything you'd expect when you played Indiana Jones. But it ended very abruptly. Three movies and done. <laughs> and by then, we had had the complete saga, which was well, six movies and all these different extra and, things. And then the Clone so Wars it was just too yeah. quick. I was just going to touch on that. Was the game any good? The game was great. The Another game, home run? No. More like a double... <laughs> With stealing third. I have no idea what that means. I'm going to take a nap now because I have no idea what you're talking about. No, it wasn't a home run because... I hear home runs are good. I don't know what it is. It wasn't a home run because it was too quick. It ended very quick. And I played it and I was done in about four or five days. And that's considered fast? That's considered fast. For you? And it was disappointing because, you know, I just played it too quick and there was nothing else. Probably what? if I caught two weeks out of it, it would have been a home run. Wow. And maybe if Crystal Skull was there with the extra young Indiana Jones thing, it would have been into the second week. But while you're playing, you're enjoying it. Oh, I loved it. Good. I love the worlds. Well, I love I the way they did it. In and, a way, and that's the characters. Good. They added a new feature allowing Indy to use his whip which is obviously a signature move. Meaning that's a feature that they didn't have any other indie no game other before. There well, was no kind of whip well, move? Well, there was whip movement, I think, with Catwoman. But with Indy using the whip, that's his move. That's his trademark. Yeah. How about you, Kyle? Any uh, memories of Indiana Jones? Did you like it? Was it easy? I thought that... The first one. The, the first one was really, really, really nice. Now, I, what did you play it on? I played it on the Wii. It okay. Was, I really liked how... They added more features than the original Star Wars 
line. But they also added like the whip crack stuff. And they also liked how they have a more modern environment. This is the first one that really has... You're not in space anymore. You're, you're on I, Earth. I mean, Batman, you're, you're kind of on Earth, but yeah, it's but still it's very more stylized. Like science, but it's, more, it's still got some science fiction. Like you can't like have this giant refrigerator that you can call Mr. Free. Just walk out right. in the middle of there. How about you, Amanda? You remember anything about Indiana Jones? I remember seeing them. Um, if you're Indiana Jones, like with the whip, yeah, you can tie somebody up with the whip and carry them along, and it looks really funny. What? If you needed to go someplace over a river or something, yeah. or to get to get up, you could tie up another character and pull them across. Or bring them sometimes, with you, and that makes it easier to get your partner to the other area. Yeah, I, I had to do that to him. They also sometimes. added different playability, building things, carrying things, which in the Star Wars world. The lightsabers would do certain things, cutting, you know, other yeah. characters' lasers would cut things. But in that world, you're using more pistols, which didn't have any special, they can only do, they can shoot a bad guy. This is still a kid game, so if you're dealing with guns now, we're still dealing with characters that fall into little tiny pieces and then come back together, and no blood, I assume, yeah, none of that and, stuff. And, and even the fact that they use the Nazis in the Indiana Jones movies, yeah. they're nondescript soldiers with blue eyes. They're just the bad guys. Yeah, and they don't they, even show the logo anywhere. I don't think I've ever seen... Oh, you do see it in the background at the in the Last Crusade, though. But they don't. it's not in your I face. It. It's not in your okay. face. At some point, they release the Crystal Skull. Is the entire game just one movie? No. That is the problem with the Indiana Jones series. As good as the game was, but not quite a home run, they announce eventually, after some other games have come out, that they're going to release Indiana Jones 2. Which you think, as if you were played the Star Wars games, they will include the Crystal Skull and maybe enhance the original game. A combo. A combo. They changed almost everything about the game when they included the Crystal Skull. Oh, so it is still a combo, you're saying? It's a combo of the first three movies. But a redesigned original. A redesigned, completely redesigned playability by adding the new movie. Worst Lego game ever. <laughs> and there we agree. Wow. We have consensus Worst on something. Lego game ever. Ever. What, what could possibly man, be so wrong I, about it? I am, I'm still angry at you, man, because you were the one who bought that game. She bought the game. She thought... I don't know why she was bought the game. Was it on the Wii? Yeah, it was on the Wii. Okay. Worst I game ever. Game I wanted to create the levels, but the thing is, they were so hard and stuff, and then I didn't want to get any time to do that, because then I had to get to the other things. I haven't finished doing the Crystal Skull yet, and that's the first thing you have to do. Instead of having a hub where you enter each movie and then enter each scene or, or section right, of the right, movie, right, right. you start out, as he said, in the college that Indy went to, but like an outside environment or whatever. Because the Crystal Skull starts pretty much in Indy's college when Mutt meets him, things yeah. like that. That's all little stuff. They spread it out instead of playing the game. They create this world, which it just replicates. So you finish the college, and then that gets you out to the next scene as if they're next to each other. You don't necessarily have to fly in a spaceship anymore or in a plane to get to the next scene, and then it ends, and you go, the game never really ends. You end a section, which ends that part of the hub, but it doesn't stop. You just keep going. So technically, for each movie, you just keep going. Wow. You can stop, obviously, but it was a whole redesign, and they thought they were being slick by creating this movie world for each movie. So Raiders of the Lost Ark, you would start in... Peru or wherever the jungle was yeah. and then you would wind up at the seaplane and then you would wind up in Cairo almost as if they were next to each other okay so did you complete Indiana Jones yes I completed it but I did it under duress parts of the game you had to drive vehicles which you might say is fun you're driving jeeps or tanks or various other planes things like that but among the game you had to pop these balloons to get a complete game you had to jump over these things all as if you're a character it, it was just awful for me as I said before, I didn't complete the game. I didn't even complete the Crystal Skull yet. And that was the first level I started out on. Didn't complete it. And I thought it was the worst waste of a video game ever. I guess I know how you feel about it now. <laughs> I like that they did it. And I like, you know, they tried. And the characters were interesting. The Crystal Skull type stuff. But they tried to go in a direction that didn't work. And I think they realized it pretty quick. Because nothing has been like that since. Well, I guess this is one particular franchise that unless somebody makes a new story, a new movie, a new TV show, a new something, they're not going to touch yeah, it. Yeah, I think it's done. And I think the toy line is done until, like you said, another movie or something comes out. You know what? Something that they could have done because it's part of the Indiana Jones world and they could have included elements of it had they gone 
in a different direction. Instead of just being the four movies in Indiana Jones 2, they could have somehow perhaps included either the young Indiana Jones from the 90s with Sean Patrick Flannery, uh, that type of those type of stories but they're so obscure at yeah, this point it's not popular enough it would be very vague and there would be a lot of work because that was a whole separate series so I think while they drop the ball on some things I think it's done and like they did on the next uh, franchise we're going to talk about as far as I can tell they did not include any easter eggs having to do with the Indiana Jones ride <laughs> well <laughs> because the ride is based on the movie so you're kind of repeating itself well that brings us to the end of part one of our Lego video game special I'd like to thank all our participants and join us again next week when we will all return and continue talking about some of the other Lego video games that are out there, including the Pirates of the Caribbean game, the Harry Potter games, and the future of Lego video games, including some of what we wish they would come out with on the Lego video game line. On behalf of everyone here, thank you for joining us and we'll see you here next week. I'll keep fast friends. Two heroes. A town full of villains on the loose. And a choice between good and evil. If you want to stop Gotham City from falling to pieces, you better snap into action. Go Batman, a video game. Stop.